Hi everybody, I have a very exciting video today. I'm happy to introduce you to Stimulus JS. It's a small little uh, JavaScript utility put out by the same people that did TurboLynx, so that would be Basecamp. And I'm very happy I found this. It's a nice pairing with TurboLynx. I actually found out about the two of them at the same time. And for those of you who are just kind of tired of reaching for the, the larger files like Vue or jQuery, Stimulus is uh, uh, great for handling simple use cases and even non-simple use cases actually for that matter uh, for a fraction of the size. So Vue, you, you clock in at like 86 kilobytes minified, whereas with uh, Stimulus, you're getting something for like 27. So it's uh, for our use case, what we're going to be using it for is deleting categories from our list. It's the perfect option. So let's start by adding it to our project. Just use npm install stimulus like that. And we'll actually install Axios as well, because I want to use Axios, uh, which is an HTTP helper there to uh, make our delete requests for our categories. And we're doing this because I don't want to send users to a slash delete route. I'd rather do that on an, with an Ajax request, which is a little cleaner uh, for obvious reasons. So we'll add that to our package.json. While that is installing, we have to update our gulp build to manage these new files. So we'll go up to our vendor JS. Stimulus is already minified, so I'll add that to our stream too. And the name of the file is stimulus.umd.js. Axios is not minified, so I can add that down here. Axios like that. Now to kind of get stimulus started and working with our app, we need to do a little bit of uh, bootstrapping here. So I'll jump to our app.js, which is our custom JS uh, file, and we'll make a new app variable. And this we will create using stimulus application and the start method. That's how we kick it off. And now on this app variable, we could call the register method. And this is what we'll call each time we want to register a new controller. And we can give this any name we want. I will call this category since we'll be using it for the categories list. And I'll pass off the handling of this part of our HTML to a categories controller, which I'll create right now. So we open up our file explorer. And within our custom JS folder, I want to create a categories JS file. This is going to be a class. So call class categories, which is now the name that we're referencing right here. Categories will be available on a global scope. This will extend the stimulus controller. So that gives us uh, some kind of different methods baked in that will help us do what we need to do. Now one of the things that come baked in with the stimulus controller is the initialize function. And this will be called each time that particular piece of HTML is on the page, the one that this controller is going to uh, work with. So let's just log something out to make sure that we're actually initializing this controller. So let's call this loaded uh, categories controller. How about that? Now, how do we wire up this class with the actual HTML? So we go to our categories edge file, which is what is spitting out our list of categories. You can wire them up by using a data controller attribute and then typing in the name of the controller you just created. So categories, this name right here, corresponds to what we registered right here. So these two names have to match. So this isn't unlike what you see with Angular 1, actually. You can add Angular controllers to an HTML element like this as well. So now anything within this div is going to be within the realm of the categories controller. Now before I can actually test this out in the browser, our new files here that we created, we have to add that to our gulp process as well. Our custom JS is just grabbing any of the JS files within the assets JS folder and just mashing them all together you know, in an arbitrary order. We want them in a specific order because our category class has to exist before the app.js can use it and register the class, register the controller. So I have to add that first right here. So this is an array, as you can see, and I'm just making sure my categories file is being loaded first. So let's run our gulp build and just get that all put together. And then we can open this up in the browser and test it out. So here I have just one 
category right now. I'll just refresh the page and you'll see we'll have our loaded statement here. See, loaded categories controller. So we know that we're wired up properly. Now let's take a quick look at some of the things that we get with stimulus. If you look at the documentation, there's not a whole lot to know, which is part of the appeal actually. Uh, it has this idea of targets and actions. So in our HTML, we can wire up targets, which will help us target certain elements in the DOM. And then we have actions, which help us, of course, associate different events like clicks, for example, with a method. So let's start by wiring up some targets. Now, baked in, we get a static method to get targets, just like that. And to wire this up properly, you return an array of the targets that you add to the HTML. So let's call the first one category right there. And then in our HTML, what we want to do is we want to use a data target attribute. And I can do that here, perhaps data target. And we call this category. Now for this to work, though, we need to add the name of the controller right before and we use the dot. So we use a period, and then the name of the actual target. And then within our class, we can reference this target on this category, so the name of our target, and then target at the end of it. So stimulus will append the target uh, at the end of all of our targets and make sure it's a capital T, it'll be camel case. Now let's actually add this within our loop because I want to show you something that tripped me up. So we're within our categories loop and now everything, every category will have its own list item and my intention here is to target each category in our list by using the data target attribute. So let's try that out. I want to log this out, our category target. So go here, I'll refresh. So we have our, our string here that we are logging out, but we also have our list item, which is great. But let's add another list item and you'll see where we get tripped up. So now we're loading it out, but it's, it's always this first list. So we don't actually create a new target for everything in our list. That's a problem. Now let's wire up an actual method and I'll show you why we can't use our targets in this way. So our new method will be delete category and it's a click event. We'll be clicking on something. So we'll grab our event object as well. And let's log out the target that we're actually clicking on. We'll grab our current target here and we actually add this to our DOM like so. Let's grab our edit icon, just duplicate that. I'll create a new one for trash. So this is a feather icon right here. We're not going to an actual route, but instead I want to attach a, an action, a stimulus action. So we use data action, and we also have to reference the categories controller, just like we did with the uh, data target up above. But instead of a period here, we use a hash to show that this is a method that we want to call and not create a target. So the method will be the delete category method that we just wired up. Now, because this is an A tag, it's understood by default that this will be a click event, but you can make this even more explicit by writing click here and using an arrow. And it's important to note that if this were not an A tag, but say a div or something else, then we would have to put the click handler right here. We'd have to put click with the arrow because otherwise stimulus won't know what the default behavior would be. So for A tags and buttons, and I don't believe there are any more that would have a default click, then you don't have to put click, but for anything else you do, otherwise it won't work. So that's how stimulus does it. And I really like that because it makes it very readable. So now when we click this, a tag with the trash icon, we will invoke, we will call our delete category method right here. So let's refresh. We have our trash cans now. When I click this, we get our clicked. Oh, we also seem to have called our initialize function again. That's because we have a hash here. We're actually reloading the page. So I want to prevent that. So we'll first call event prevent default like that. I'll refresh. We'll try this again click and we get our target, which is the icon that we just clicked. And then we click this one, we'll get our target. Now, if instead of logging out the current target, I logged out this category target like that, comment that out for a second. There we go. So we'll click it. We get our first list item, which is what we expect. When I click this one, we're logging out 
our category target again, but this time it's still the first one. So we can't use this, uh, we can't use any of the targets here. We have to use the event object to zero in on the item that we're actually clicking on. So if we want to delete a specific category, which is what we want to do, we don't need target here. So I'm going to get rid of that. Make sure in our code here we're not using it anymore. We don't need it. And instead we want to target this specific category. So I'll just create a custom data attribute here. Data, and we'll just call this category ID. And don't forget our quotes. And we'll use uh, the edge curly braces here to spit out the current category ID is the value for this attribute. So now when we click it, we have our current target. We'll call get attribute on it. And the attribute we want to grab is the category ID attribute that we just created. And so now we're going to log out the value that is found right here. So refresh, I click this, we get our ID of 10, click that one, ID of 11. So now I know we're grabbing uh, unique category IDs each time. So now that we're successfully grabbing our unique category IDs, we can wire up our actual destroy methods. We'll go to routes first, below our put route listener here. We'll set one up for delete. This uh, path, the route path can remain the same. Instead of using the update function, of course, we use the destroy function. And now we can go to our controller and we'll wire that up. So here at the destroy method, we need our parameters so we can grab the ID that was passed in. And we need the response object too to send a response. This will be an Ajax request, so we can't send back a view or redirect or anything like that. We'll just send back a simple OK response to make sure to, to let the front end know that it worked OK. So we'll find our category first. This will be equal to await category. We can just call the find method defined by ID. And once we actually have it, we'll await the uh, deletion. So we just call category delete in that case. And for now, we'll just assume that it was successful and we'll return a response. Uh, let's send back a 200 with a JSON object that just has deleted set to true. We're not actually going to be checking this right now, but we'll just kind of scaffold that out for now. Now back in our categories class, instead of logging out this ID, I'll save it in a variable so I can delete it. And we have Axios available to us now. Remember, we included it in our vendor script. So we have Axios, and it's lowercase, delete. And we want to route this to HTTP, our local host in this case, port 3333. We'll go to categories route, and I need to append my cat ID at the end. Now, this will return a promise. So we'll take a look at our response. And to reload the list to make sure that the, the category that we just deleted is no longer on the list. We can use the global location object and just call reload on it and that will reload our page and update our list for us. So let's go back here, we'll refresh. That should all be wired up. Now when I click the trash can icon, we'll actually be deleting this from our list. So I'll get rid of node, that's gone. We refresh the page and bye bye JavaScript. We'll create another one just to test it out. Let's create a view tutorials. Slug, and we'll create that. Good, that works, and we'll delete it again. Perfect. So that works, no problem. So I hope, if nothing else, this video has encouraged you to uh, experiment with things that are kind of outside the norm. I can speak for myself in that I did not know about stimulus until just recently. I found out about it at the same time that I learned about Turbolinks, and I'm really pleased that I found them. I'm really pleased with what they've added to my toolbox. I, I, I think they're great, great tools. So I hope I've encouraged you to look beyond the so-called norm of the views and the jQueries and the Reacts to experiment with some new tools and you may be very happy with the results. So give this a try, play around with it a little bit. If you end up doing something, po uh, post it up on GitHub and share it down below the video. I think it would be great for all of us to learn. I've only done some pretty limited things with stimulus to date and it would be great to see uh, what else um, somebody else can come up with. As always, I appreciate all thumbs up. If you have questions, post those down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>